Hey, hey geeks, it's Carlin and Nick, and, and when, when we're not wishing Kurt a happy 60th birthday, we're going geeking on Walt Disney World! friends nick and carlin from the nothing can stop us now youtube channel guess what nick and carlin i've got my own youtube channel now and i'm beginning to put my podcast feed into the youtube channel so go check out youtube if that's a place you like to listen to podcasts check out the geekin on walt disney world podcast a couple episodes are out there now i'll be putting out my past episodes pretty soon but hey disney world geeks curtis stone here i'm the pod father host of this amazing geekin family welcome to episode 558 of the geekin on walt disney world podcast this week i chat with author susan vaness about her second edition release of her book disney world hacks and i've been having fun talking and hanging out with friends like susan nick and carlin reviewing disney parks and disney world tips and hacks for over 10 years if you're new to the podcast welcome I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and now we, we reach out to our Disney geek friends, and they tell their trip stories and give you lots of tips and hacks through their real-world experiences. They're positive, caring, generous, and experienced Disney geeks. And we do encourage a family atmosphere here on the show. We'd love for you two to join our geek and family. We've got an amazing private discussion group on Facebook. It's a great place to search for those answers to your questions and Share your trip pictures and have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the internet. We're independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel. We'd love to be your travel guides and help you book your rooms, tickets, dining reservations. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or transfer the trip bookings that they've done themselves to the travel in tiers. That's my wife, Margita, her good friend, Auntie Judy. Get started by emailing them at travelintiers at gmail.com. Don't have to remember that right now. Just check the show notes on that podcast app that you listen to the show. Check our website. You'll see their email as well as mine. If you'd like to reach out to us and talk about your next adventures to Disney World, Universal Studios, do a Disney cruise, all that fun stuff. Adventures by Disney. We've got a client going out there this summer. Matter of fact, it was so much fun. Susan Vaness reached out to me to be a guest on the podcast. She's the author of the book, Disney World Hacks, the second edition just came out this April. She was so much fun to talk to. Her, her, Susan and her husband are traveling the country in an RV. Seems like a pattern I've started. A couple of guests recently traveling the country in over a year in an RV. We talk about her history with Disney World, how she got started writing books about Walt Disney World. She also has a book about hidden secrets, which I have on my bookshelf. I ask her how to beat the crowds and some tips you may never have thought of, because I know my geeks are really smart. We get some questions from our listeners. We talk newbie tips and pro tips. And I do a little bit of fun with this or that and Susan's favorite things about Disney World. Hey, geeks, you got to have the hacks for a complicated vacation spot like Disney World. This week, our new friend Susan is helping us hack our way through Disney World. <music> You know, at Christmas time, my wife and I, we always buy Disney books, and I'm pretty sure I have the first edition of this book, and I've got the author coming on to talk about the second edition of the Walt Disney World Hacks, and I know my geeks love tips and hacks, so I'm so pleased to bring Susan Vaness to the Geekin' Podcast. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I know we had some technical issues. I'm telling you, I've been doing this 10 years, Susan. I can't believe the amount of technical issues I've had on my side. So don't feel bad about technical issues. Or... Well, if anybody's going to have technical issues, it's going to be me. <laughs> so my apologies, but here well, we just, are. You're just telling me you're in a unique situation right now. Where are you? Yeah, we are in, my husband and I are in Baton Rouge right now. We are doing a year on the road in an RV. 
we're about 10 and a half months into it. So we're loving it and we're also exhausted and it's just been a tremendous experience. Where have you been all around the, the country? We went from uh, Florida up to Michigan and then we're doing all states west. Hmm. We've been to every state. We did end up having to ditch, what was it, Washington and Oregon. Because we were just so exhausted at that point. But other than those two, we've been to every state and have now worked our way down to Louisiana. Uh, we're tired. <laughs> I think the universe is telling me to look into expanding my podcast into RVing or other travels. I feel this because you're the second one in the last month that has been <laughs> in an RV for more than a year. And it's... Well, if you do, make me one of your first guests. I'd love to talk about it. And my husband, he's a great talker, too. He's, he'd be happy to be on as well. This is fantastic. I'm lining up content already. And it's, I'm telling you, something's pointing me in this direction. Oh, that's fantastic. Can I get you in the mood for Disney World? Absolutely. <laughs> well, what's your history with Disney World? Well, I first went to Walt Disney World shortly after it opened. Hmm. And remember a lot from that trip. It was just such a stunning experience. And I'd grown up watching the wonderful world of Disney. And here we, we were going down to visit some friends in Miami and heard about this place, Walt Disney World, decided to drop by on our way home. And it was just so overwhelming and so magical, but really different, obviously, than it is today. It was just Magic Kingdom. And then I didn't go again until after Epcot was open. And that's really when I got bit by the Disney bug. It was just such an immense experience. And started going every year after that and then just have made it a career. How often did you go then after those initial experiences? I went every year for quite a long time and then moved down there about 20 years ago. And down there, I'm saying that, well, because I'm not there. Moved to Orlando, <laughs> <Over there. laughs> but, wherever it is. It was, I lived in Michigan. Moved down to Florida, down to Orlando, right behind Walt Disney World, and went all the time. Yeah. How was that yeah. transition? I've had some friends, a lot of friends recently move to the area. I've talked to them about that, too. How was your transition from Michigan to Disney World? Well, I'd had 40 Michigan winters, so it was a fantastic transition. I was delighted not to have Michigan winters anymore, but yeah, I loved it. I loved living right behind Magic Kingdom. We could see the fireworks. How did you get into writing about Disney World then from that point? When I had that first trip to Epcot, I remember I was sitting in the Living Seas. And do you remember the sea cabs that used to... You watched a little a little pre-show movie, and then the doors whoosh opened up. Yeah, and you got into these little cabs, and it took you into the aquarium. And I was just so blown away by that, and thinking, you think you're getting one thing, but there's the ne the next layer, and then the next layer, and the next layer. And I just started really getting into all these, from the the really big detail down to the tiny detail. And that led me to write The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World. My husband just said, you're so, you love this so much. Just write a book about it. Was your That's background as an author? Were you, did you have a background in writing? No, I'd always wanted to be a writer. But then my husband, this is a, we got married about 20 years ago and we're both writers or both, he was a journalist and we just started a travel writing business and said, okay, this is what we are now. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, he writes on travel also? Yes, we have a travel writing business. He was a sports journalist, but also was the author of A Burt Guide to Orlando for the UK market. Oh, yeah. And from that, just we decided to transition completely into hmm. travel writing. Is he British? I think I heard him and he was helping you there. <laughs> he is, I thought yeah. I heard a little bit of the accent. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> He's so stubborn. He refuses to let go of that accent. That's all right. <laughs> we have some British listeners. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, we love our British visitors. They kept us going when times were tough in Orlando. Disney's got a lot of British folks that go. Huge. Right? Yeah, we're so lucky. <laughs> I know. Yep. 
Well, I have some good friends that are British, so they're listening to this podcast. They they love a little shout out. My buddy Kevin Curtis Allen, one of my earlier guys, he's still with me over this last ten years. But so, why did you want to focus on hacks for Disney World? Well, I learned so much from longtime visitors when I was new, and I just thought from the success of the Hidden Magic, my publisher wanted to do another book, and I just thought, wouldn't it be nice? to have a friend take you by the hand and give you the wealth of their knowledge or give you insights into just how to save time, save money, save on stress. And so from that came Walt Disney World Hacks. Did you ever run into a guest that looks so confused? You can hear their conversation and they're asking each other questions. <laughs> Don't you feel so bad for them? They just showed up with no research whatsoever. And he used to be able to do that. When I first started going, you could just wing it. Yeah. But you got to be pretty savvy these days. And it, it's nice to see people who are just taking it in with no prior research, but you also know <laughs> for kind of a tough day. <laughs> One of my favorite stories is my daughter did the college program on two different tours. She was oh. working at the beach club, the marketplace there. And she said to me, Dad, you wouldn't believe. People come in and they ask me, how do you get to Disney World? And she, she's like, you're here. <laughs> but of course, what uh, they meant is where's Magic Kingdom? <laughs> yes. We love our tourists who are new to it. <laughs> yes. And I've got a lot of experience geeks. So I guess you got to bring your A game today, Susan. Well, we'll give a little bit for all the beginners too. That's searching that sees the title. But okay. hey, do you know John Self? He's a writer. He does food blogging. He seemed to know who you are, John Self. And I asked a bunch of my listeners to give me some questions for you, which I'll put in here too. But he asked a question, how much time did you spend each year researching the book? We write a lot about Walt Disney World in Orlando. So we're always researching. And that's part of the reason we're doing this RV trip was we just needed to disconnect after 20 years of really never taking a vacation. It's pretty much every day I'm always looking for stuff. We go into the parks a lot, but then when it comes time to update a book, like for the second edition or for the Hidden Magic books, I usually spend several weeks just making sure that everything is still still viable and then trying to find new things as well. But it, it's really, it's really, I mean, you know how it is. You're always on, right? That's right. You're always researching and looking to see what's going on and what's new. A lot of truth to that. That sounds like a similar answer. I've interviewed over the years, the unofficial guide to authors. Your answer oh, sounds yeah. very similar to, to what they do too, because that book is so packed, but they still are looking for that thing that's a little different that they got to update for sure. And there's always something to update. Disney is yeah. constantly changing. So that's what we love about it for sure. It, it is. keeps us coming back. Yeah. I think my listeners definitely, they're very geeky and I, I, I can tell you're a, a Disney geek too, but <laughs> okay. yeah, definitely. You've got, I, I know one when I hear one. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, do you have any favorite secret secrets or Easter eggs that Maybe even some of my listeners might be surprised to, oh, to know about. Easter eggs. I've got more than 600 in, <laughs> <laughs> in the Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World. But Is there a favorite of yours? Say, oh, it just, it's all incredible. I love all the Imagineer signatures. I think one of, my, one of my favorites, some of my favorites are things that are just, they're right there in front of you, but you don't necessarily, for example, when you're walking into Pirates of the Caribbean, if you look off to your left, there's a rock there in the landscaping that's a skull. But then when you go through the ride, just after you go into that first tunnel, there's off to your left again, there's another skull. But as you pass it, if you look at it, it's actually a series of that from a distance look like one unified skull, but they're really, I can't remember how many, but they're really a series of rocks. So I love that kind of stuff. Galaxy's Edge, I could just spend. I could spend all day, well, I often have spent all day just walking around Galaxy's Edge. I love things like in Ogus Cantina, there's a message board and it's got a bunch of Star Wars references on it. And it's just, yeah. <laughs> I love the things that are right there in the open, that if you just take the time to look, you see them. So 
that's a good way reason to read your book to to find those ahead of time and have some fun mm. looking for those kinds of things. I know the cast members are good usually too if you ask them. The any... cast members are the true dis Disney magic. They're just yeah. If you can, if you can, don't interrupt them while they're trying to do their work. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes if it's slow. You can really have a great conversation with the cast member. For sure. You know what my favorite Easter eggs? My wife used to point. She reads a lot of these books for sure. I try to get her something for Christmas every year that she can read. And the one in Splash Mountain, of course, it's going to be gone now. Mm. But there was a little gopher that would come down from the ceiling before you start to go. You know which one I'm talking about? I do. The FSU gopher. FS, I'm going to miss that one. Yeah. Know. It'd be if, nice if they actually keep that. He can say something else. I want. I don't know if it's a yeah. sheet. But, I don't uh, know. I don't have any expectation of how it's going to be. It'd be really cool if they kept that one. That'd be. I don't know, but maybe it wouldn't fit the movie that they're trying to portray, but. But does it really fit Splash Mountain either? I don't know. It's supposed, <laughs> I, to, it's supposed to, to me, that's a wonderful Imagineer signature. Yeah. I love that kind Something of stuff. Something that they added just that was their own little personal. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I've always been confused by the Disney World lingo. And I think I don't remember where I saw this in the book, but there were some here that I didn't know. So can you give us some examples of Disney lingo? So when people hear it, they know what. Yeah. The one you don't ever want to hear is protein spill, which is <laughs> probably pretty easy to figure out what that is. You know, when something has come out of a guest. Yeah. Um, my favorite is the white powder alert. <laughs> that was is, the one that shocked me. It, it happens. Well, I can't yeah. say how often it happens a lot yeah. where somebody will spread their dearly departed ashes, usually in, in Haunted Mansion, but it can be anywhere. And then they have to do some cleanup. I never heard that one before. It's, unfortunately, it's probably obvious that people want to do that, but yeah, that one. What a great place to, to find your final resting. I bet you my wife, that's one of her favorite attractions. So I can understand why people would choose yeah. that too. Yeah. But the code, code 101, code 102. They're saying, but... Other times they may not, they uh, yeah. may not. I don't know if I've ever heard that one, but I like it. Yeah. All right. I get this question all the time. Speaking of some of the newbie questions and I do a forum at work too. This one came up recently. What's the best time of year to go to Disney World to beat the crowds? Well, it used to be that you could go pretty much any time outside of Christmas and Easter and summertime, but that is just not the case anymore. Really? mid-January to mid-April, as long as you're avoiding any holidays or spring break, are probably the best time to go is whenever you can go. But those are probably the best times to, yeah. to avoid the crowds. I know my answer to that has been now, because I was there in January and we used to go at the end of January at a conference. My Disney World experience started going to technical conferences in 1999 and it was wonderful. My wife would come and she would spend time with her sister and it, you can almost walk on rides. Those days are long gone. Disney has figured out how to load those parks, haven't they? They certainly have. Yeah. So what I tell people yeah. is what you need is some strategies to beat the crowds. So what are some of the best strategies to beat crowds? And true advice of arrive early, take a midday break and come back in the evening. That still works. It, it is going to be busier than it was 10 years ago, but that, that really still works. It's a little bit harder to do with young children. It's harder to come back for those late night hours, but that's a great way to, to beat a lot of the crowd. Once you're in the parks, finding some of the shortcuts, like the path between Storybook Circus and Space Mountain or African Pandora or that walkway between Test Trek and Mexico, finding those places where a lot of guests don't go helps navigate through the crowded park a little bit better. Yeah. Let me think what else. Going during the school year, if you're a grown up with children who is willing to take them out during the school year, that's still a good strategy. And you can do so much schooling while you're at Walt Disney World. Anything from map reading to critical thinking to it, it's just there's a lot of schooling that can be done there if you're willing to do that. My 
probably my favorite hack of all, but also to help navigate through the crowds is to walk in single file. It's super simple. Anybody can do it, but you will be amazed at how much quicker you'll get through a crowded park if you walk in single file instead of side to side. That's fantastic. I've never heard that one. That's a oh, simple but, but easy. Put the kids one. in the middle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, have, have an adult on either end of the kids or put them towards the front so that you can keep an eye on them. But it's astonishing how much faster you'll get through a crowd yeah. in single file. <laughs> the funny thing is, I still feel like I'm 6'2 and about 270, Susan. And when you'd think, I, I sometimes feel like I'm invisible and people don't know I'm with the crowd I'm with. And I still get cut off from my party, <laughs> even if yeah. I'm in single file when it's crowded. Yeah. Well, that's why you got to make sure the kids are in the middle because <laughs> you don't want them getting want, cut off. <laughs> you want them surrounded. Yeah, I could probably find my way back to the, the main party. <laughs> yes. What about Genie Plus? Any tips around Genie Plus for... Genie Plus, because of the situation that I'm in now with the traveling for a year, I was incredibly lucky to have a co-writer on this edition. Hmm. I knew Fast Pass Plus inside out. There were some really great hacks for Fast Pass Plus. Hmm. Genie Plus is super complicated, yeah. partially because everybody tours different. So if you're with young kids, if you were teens, if you were, are adults only, and just depending on your touring style, Genie Plus can be, a, it's a really complicated system. I didn't get to use it enough before we left on this trip. So I was really lucky to have a co-writer, Samantha Davis Friedman, who went to Disney for me, went to Walt Disney World for me. She's the one who really yeah. tested all those. It's working. But, but it is. Yeah, it's working it for is, her. It's a tough system. Yeah. Did she find it works for her though? Yeah, she did. Yeah. Um, she actually, she's, I wish I had her right next to me. She's the one you want to talk to. She, she knows them Don't better worry. than I do at those Don't points. worry. I've got lots of people that are using it to its fullest and we're, we're doing fine. It's working out pretty good, but you're right. I think the best thing is to try to get used to that app before you go. That's one of those pre things to do. Yeah, use. definitely. And, and knowing when to use it and when not to use it. You don't have to use it every day of your trip and it is expensive. If you're a family of four, Right. It's an expense if you're going to be there for a week and have to use it every day. It's really knowing when to use it. And this, that is something we talk about in Hacks, hmm. how to decide if you need it, which parks benefit most from it. Right. But yeah, it is, it can be a, a great time saver, but you don't necessarily have to use it. Yeah. I think Magic Kingdom definitely is a good place mm. to have that because there's so many attractions, especially if you've never been to Disney World before and you want to get as much in as you possibly can. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. Is there a particular challenging or surprising hack that you uncovered during your research? Well, it would be Genie Plus. Yeah. They're definitely challenging. For surprising hacks, one of the, probably the one that surprised me the most was that you can download Google Translate to your phone and there's a, there's an element in it that's like your camera will translate a sign for you. Okay. And walking around World Showcase in Epcot. Yeah. There's so many things are written in other languages not, that aren't English. Okay. And you can just use this little uh, app to translate these signs. And oh. some of them say exactly what you think they're going to say. That's fun. But some of them are, are funny. Yeah. yeah. That was a surprise. Oh, so you would speak it into, the, into your phone and the translator would translate it for you. You just hold it up to the, you hold oh, you it take up a picture? to the sign. Oh, you yeah, just take a picture. You just hold the phone up to the oh. sign oh, it reads and it. it'll read it for you. Can it do that Did in paint? Galaxy's Edge? I, I didn't have Arabesh the last time <laughs> I used it, but like Japan and World Showcase, that's a great place. Morocco. I love that tip. Yeah. That's, that's one of my that favorite. That was a real surprise. Yeah. That's one of my favorite in World Showcase. I would love to do the tour there. Did you ever do any of the tours? I have. Yeah. yeah. I, I really enjoyed the one in Epcot. Learned a lot there. I mean, Keys to the Kingdom is a right. great tour. Everybody loves that. I've done that one. I just never did the one in World Showcase and I'd love to do that. I don't I don't know that it's mm. been come back though that I've seen, but that one. I yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it's come back or yeah. not, but if it has, when it does and it will, I would think yeah. it's pretty popular. Definitely get on that one. That's a good tour. So I saw one of your quotes 
Matt Roseboom. He said, I don't care how many times you've been to Walt Disney. Do you know who Matt is? I love Matt. He's yeah. a dear friend. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, he gives you a lot of praise here. He says, Walt Disney World Hacks has a bunch of tips you've never thought of. Now, my audience is really experienced. I'm, one, I'm challenging you now. So you can, oh, man, that's tough. Can you think of five um, tips they may never have thought of? <laughs> you've already given us some already, so I should give you a break. Those okay, were two. yeah, there's this thing called Google Translate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about four more? <laughs> All right, we'll try this. Um, at the holidays, when you buy something at Disney, most people just take their receipt and throw it in the bag and never look at it again. But take a look at your receipts during the holidays because often you'll find some kind of a discount on them. And it might only be in the next two hours, you can get 20% off food or merchandise or whatever it is. But those receipts often have discounts on them. So that I didn't would know be, that. You got me there. Oh, yay. Awesome. Good. All right. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. What else? If you're, this works especially well if you've never been to Walt Disney World. When you're looking at, when you're looking on Disney's site, at packages, at hotel rooms, leave an algorithm, you're leaving an algorithm. The more you look, and the more you sign up for things like their newsletter, different uh, blogs, those you. kinds of things. They're tracking yes. you. Okay. Make sure Disney is tracking you a lot, but don't push the button. Don't okay. finalize your trip. And sometimes you'll get an email with that final little incentive, which could be a, a, quite a nice discount. Oh, so that's always leave, been... What was that? They caught, there was a name for that. People look for that secret code or something. They might, I mean, it reminds me of that. Sometimes people get yeah. a code and they'll be so excited. I got a code from Disney World, a discount yeah. code. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that works best if you haven't been before, but that's okay. a terrific one. I like that. That's good. I guess it depends on how savvy people are, but I would say that those okay. are a couple of really good tips for. I love it. Yeah. All right. I got a couple of questions for my listeners. Sure. From Samantha Carpin, is there a tip or hack that you hear that makes you cringe because it's so wrong? If so, what is it? Hi, Samantha. <laughs> the answer is yes. There are a lot of them. Probably the thing that makes me cringe most is when people give advice, we'll call it, on something that will actually break Disney's rules. Oh, and a, an yeah. example of that would be to park it at the time it was downtown Disney. So park it downtown Disney, grab a bus. You don't have to pay for parking. Well, Disney's not stupid. They caught on to that and now we all suffer. Yeah. It's really the ones that, you know, that yeah. blatantly break Disney's rules. And that was something I felt really strongly about in, in hacks was not to give any hacks that are going to break Disney's rules. We can work within the system. We can work around it and find the, the legitimate loopholes. But when you blatantly break the rules, That's everybody eventually suffers. Yeah, I can remember my wife and some of my people in my community. We have a really nice Facebook group where people are really very friendly and helpful. But my wife has always been that way too. Don't do anything that ruins it. Remember... Here are some really nasty ones, especially people that were people when they're getting around the DAS pass. That one was tough. Yeah. yeah. They were doing something. I forget now off the top of my head, but they, yeah. tight, they tightened up the DAS pass quite a bit because people were hacked that system, which was unfortunate. Yeah, absolutely. The Cinderella's dining at the castle was another big one where they were being, all the time slots were being booked by very few people. And now we have $20 to save your spot for yeah. dining. Or people yeah. will buy a bunch of this stuff for eBay and then there's nothing for the popcorn <laughs> buckets. Or... The popcorn bucket. Isn't that crazy? Who needs a popcorn bucket? Then? I love the popcorn. I love popcorn. It's probably my favorite food, but oh my gosh. What yeah, the merchandise thing. Was it the figment one? Did it, was it going for like $1,000 on eBay or something, someone told me. It was, yeah. Was it was it? going for a lot. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That Figment guy is pretty popular. He gets a bucket. I love Figment, I but know. I'm not paying $1,000 <laughs> for a popcorn bucket. I know. it. Great question, Samantha. I love it. I didn't, I guess I didn't read it really closely. Susan got that better than I did. That's so true. I don't like, when people break the rules, it usually 
harms the rest of us some way. Ultimately, it will do that, yes. With Disney changing protocols, this is my friend Wendy Fox, with Disney changing protocols constantly, how do you keep up to date with your book? I mean, it's similar. Hi, Wendy. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's a tough one because once you go to print, you've gone to print. But there are times, and I'm very lucky to have a great publisher, there are times when, when a book goes to print, it goes a, a certain number. There's a certain print run. And when that print run ends, there can be, the next printing can be modified. So you can keep up that way, but yeah, it is mm. pretty tough to do that. Yeah. What are, here's from my, I call her cousin Heather because her maiden name is Stone. And so cousin Heather says, what are three secret must do's that most people don't know about? One. Well, hi, Heather, first of all, <laughs> gosh, that's a tough one because what might be a must do for me isn't necessarily a must do for anybody else. I think of things like, I would say there's some things that are a little bit hidden that people don't know about. One of them for me has always been the boardwalk area. People it's yeah, it's a secret because they don't know it's over there. We were just talking about lounges with my episode. I just recorded a uh, Sunday night. We did one of those like basketball brackets and had 64 lounges. And then we were talking, <laughs> We, I don't know, I'm not sure why we included jelly rolls, but I think jelly rolls is one of those for us. Our, my community had one of the best times ever at jelly rolls. Uh, it's cl a classic. Right. Yeah. And a yeah, lot of people might not know that. Another one for us, the kimonos has, which is over at the Swan and they do karaoke. Those were, those were two, there's two examples for you to give you an idea that you can think. I for me, I think one of the one of the one of the great must do's is to either rent bikes or a golf cart at Fort Wilderness and just go for a drive around, especially at Christmas and Halloween, mm. because these RVers, oh my gosh, I, I don't know where they keep this stuff. Living in an RV and knowing how tight your space is, <laughs> I don't know where they keep this stuff. But man, the blow up Mickey's and. Some of these sites are really amazingly decorated and at Halloween and Christmas. So that that's a really fun thing to do that I think a lot of people probably don't know about. Mm. The the drawing classes at Animal Kingdom, the conservation I think it's still at the conservation station. Yes. That's another fun thing. I did that and on my last trip. How did it come out? I think it came out fantastic, Susan. Yeah. They do. And I'm a whore. I can only do stick figures only. If I have a <laughs> Disney animator with me, though, I'm quite awesome. Proficient, they I guess. Are, yeah, they're <laughs> so good at leading these classes that even young children, when they show their photos on Facebook or wherever, yeah, they're really good. That's I agree. I love doing those. I think that's a cool thing to do. You know um, what I had that, too, was at the Art the Art ball, of Animation. The Art Festival. Oh, yeah. They had it at the American Pavilion, the big stage. They had a guy, a woman up there. Oh, okay artist up there doing it i was like wow that's great a great place to to get more people to do it yeah uh, i've always loved that that's a great one there we go i think art of animation had it for a little while too if mm, i remember correctly sure. another one would be taking the boat from disney springs over to port orleans yeah. it's just it's relaxed it's beautiful you get to see some of the areas most guests don't see it's really romantic I that's agree. another and it's totally free i agree I love yeah. the quiet places. If I do, if I ever become a vlogger, I'm, I'm thinking down the road, maybe Susan, I might move down there and become a vlogger. So yeah, that I would love well, to do those quiet, beautiful places. And just to add, if you want to do another must do, do Yeehaw Bob over at the, the river. Roost oh, while you're yeah. There. He's good fun. <laughs> he's definitely good fun. It was sad when he was gone for a little while, the pandemic and yeah, he's back and going strong. Good job. All right. I got John also asked John. So I think he was being a little sarcastic here, but I'll give you the real question. Okay. Why are corn dogs better at Disneyland? Why are corn dogs? But corn dogs are better at Disneyland because Walt Disney walked through <laughs> Disney. He walked Disneyland. So his magic is still there. So everything tastes better. Great answer. I often have people on to talk about their Disneyland trips and I've not been there in many years. I want to that's one of my things to do with my wife because she's never been, but. Oh. 
I always hear the food yeah. is better at Disneyland. What do you think? Is the food better at Disneyland? Up its game immensely mm. in the last, well, 20 years even. It's mm. really, there's some exceptional dining mm. at Walt Disney World. So I like to hear true. that. I mean, yeah. So many yeah. people saying, I think it's too a lot about the snacks and finger foods that the quick service, maybe that's where I heard it primarily from my listeners, but I'm glad to, I did a 10 year episode with some friends of mine from another podcast, the Disney crush podcast. And they were asking me, and I wasn't thinking about it. They were asking me some of the things I miss that have left, like in the food area. And then things that have, what I love that has come over the last 10 years. And I was amazed that think of all the restaurants that have opened up and the variety we have with Disney Springs and so many, and they're constantly opened up new ones. It's just amazing to me, the options you have for restaurants. Oh, it's immense. You no. could eat there. Well, you <laughs> couldn't. I couldn't afford to eat there every day. But you could eat every meal there for a year and never repeat the same restaurant. It's, yeah. It is really terrific and definitely some excellent food. When I sat down and listed out some of the things that have that we've gotten over the last 10 years, mind-boggling. We should appreciate what we have, John. At Disney World. <laughs> All right, a couple, uh, before we get into, I'm going to do like a fast finish with you. But, oh, okay. Uh, All right. Let's help some of our newbies. What's some of your favorite newbie tips? Number one newbie tip. You can't do it all hmm. in one vacation. But, and everybody's all, it's the vacation of a lifetime. I'm packing as much as I possibly can. And it's not about the vacation of a lifetime because you just get hooked. You're coming back. So don't don't try to pack it all in. But that that to me is the number one thing. Don't over plan because you're going to go home and you're not going to remember what you did. And uh, the reason I say that is because I did that. And <laughs> I remember having one vacation. I came back. I'd been looking forward to it for a year. And I planned so much. Did it all while we were there, got back and just went, what the heck just happened? I don't remember it. Yeah. So that's a that's something I think newbies need to pay attention to. The other thing, and you alluded to this a little bit earlier, is don't stand in the middle of the park holding your map going, what should we do next? If you didn't do any planning in advance, that's okay. But get in line for something while you're looking at the map, because by the time you've figured out the next few hours plan, you're going to be at the front of the line and you're on a ride. That's a good one. Well, it, but, but do, do that pre-planning mm -hmm. and, and sit down with your group, have everybody choose, you know, two or three things that are their priority. Um, make that your focus. And now you've got a plan. Y you can't fit it all in. You just can't do it. So, so when everybody's got th what their most important things are, once you have that done, then you can wing it a little bit more if you're not a real mm. planning kind of person. I love it. Uh, but out of that comes be flexible. Mm. Have that really great plan for your entire vacation, if that's what you enjoy doing. But then, you know, when you start to hear rumblings of mutiny, it's time to ditch the plan. <laughs> and if your kid wants to ride Dumbo five times, ride Dumbo five times. You know, these are such fleeting years with young children and, and that wonderful, magical, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't last. That's right. So that was yeah, one of the things I... Was, when I was reading the unofficial guide book, my wife and I, when we were planning that first trip, that was the one thing that stuck out to me. Disney has got a lot to do and lots of entertainment, but don't be surprised if the kids love the pool more than anything else. <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the sort of 10 and under crowd, you paid all that money. You've got them in the most magical place in the world. And they're sitting there going, when can we go back to the pool? <laughs> Just think, no, 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 you will enjoy yeah. this. <laughs> I was that kid. I loved water slides and pools. And now they've got all those splash pl pads and everything. That would have been, been all about that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our oldest, taking our oldest to the splash pads in, in Epcot. And just kids running around and just a diaper running through. There's yeah. the spontaneity of that is so rare in Walt Disney World. And those diapers they can hold a lot of water you hit those newbie tips exactly right excellent job Good. all right 
How about some pro tips? Because I know in your pro book, you actually, that's where I got this idea because you have newbie tips and pro tips kind of italics or called out in your book. Yeah. When I was putting together the concept of the book, I just thought there are hacks that everybody can use. But if you are new and you pick up this book, I want you to be able to find something that talks directly to you and helps you save the time and the money and the stress. But if you've been doing this a long time, you don't want to just read that as part of the text. So I did really want to set those two things aside so that anybody can use any of these tips. But that was important to me that, that newbies and pros had their own tips. So for pro tips, use online check-in. If you've been before and you've had that magical moment of having the front desk say, welcome home, it's, it's such a great moment. But if you've been five or six or 10 or 15 times, you don't necessarily need that anymore. Right. It's always lovely. But if you use online check-in, you can give your credit card information. You choose a PIN number. You can connect your credit card. You can have your magic band sent to your house. And then 60 days in advance, you can check in. And once you arrive, you'll get a text when your room is ready. So you can go to the pool. You can go to the parks. That's a not... I would hate for newbies to miss out on that well, that first welcome home. Yeah, they might have some questions too that the cast members, there's always helpful people there answering questions. So you try to show them how to get around the resorts that are quite complex. And yeah, absolutely. Another one would be um, you, if you're staying on site, you can link your credit card to your magic band and you'll have a a, a limit. So it's what... I think it's 1500 for the, the values and the moderates, 2000 for the deluxe resorts. And if you're using your magic band all, for all of your purchases, food and what have you, and you start to get close to your limit, but you're not done with your vacation, you can go, you can pay off that limit at the front desk and it resets. So it doesn't give you more, a higher limit. But you don't, you're not stuck with that limit. And some people don't actually, don't actually know that. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. It sure gets easy to use your magic band and that money to just add up. It goes really fast. <laughs> and now more than ever. <laughs> oh, another one is you don't actually have to, your children don't actually have to use the finger scans. Oh, yeah. Um, some people aren't comfortable with that. Some kids are just too fidgety. So when you first go into a park, an adult or anyone in your party, but usually it's an adult, can use their finger as the scan for that park entry or a magic band. Yeah. But you have to make sure that that person is always going to be with you each time the child goes into, into yeah. the park. Good one. Um, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Another one I think is it used to be so great to be able to pass on your fast pass. If you're not using your fast pass, you could just gift another group with it. And right. so I think a lot of longtime people really enjoy doing that. And you can't do that anymore. But you can still, if you've hired a stroller at Disney, if you're leaving the park early or if you're leaving after the fireworks, but you see somebody with young kids who are starting to really tuck her out, you can actually gift your, your stroller rental to another family because okay. they can't take it out of the park. Oh, cool. But, people love... Yeah, they're yeah. usually pretty welcoming to a little Disney magic from a, another guest. Yeah, and it just feels really good. And I think when you've been going to the parks for a long time, I know I, I really seek out those chances to make stay just a little mm. bit easier. Good job on all the tips. Now, yeah. now get now it's going to get tough. Okay. I want to get to know you a little bit better and what oh, some of your okay. favorites are. All right. Could My daughter that? and I used to do this when she was podcasting with me we used to do this with listeners that we met for the first time so a little this or that and a lot of times we have our own personal preference so we'll see how you make out compared to me okay so first one ohana or chef mickey's pick one uh, ohana yeah ohana. are you a fan oh, of yeah. ohana i'm a fan of chef mickey's too but i love ohana i love the the view i love the the kids do they still do the I haven't been to Ohana in a while. Do they still do the little? Uh, oh, the, the little parade with parade. The kids. Yeah, last yeah they've been yeah, doing yeah, it. yeah they, oh, the I coconut races. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. What's really changed is the skewers are gone. I was saying that was one of the things I miss 
from oh. things. I was talking about the 10 year anniversary show I did. They don't do the skewers anymore. They do family style. Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah. yeah. I, the skewers were cool. Yeah. That, that was too bad. unique, That's a right? Yeah, definitely. All right. I like that one too. Rope drop or late night? Oh, late night. I'm not a rope dropper. Okay. <laughs> Easy. What do you like doing at night? Why is that so much better? I like the lower crowds at night. I love the look of the parks. Animal Kingdom, as you can get there, it, it, it used to close before the sun went down, really. But if you can be in Animal Kingdom after dark, it's great. And the fairy lights in, in World Showcase, well, I just okay. love the parks at night. Perfect answer. Okay, this is a geeking term. Full stink or laid back? For me, laid back. Yeah. I thought totally you were going to say back. that. Because you've been, you go, you live there. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. We had a listener years and years ago, just, she was from Canada. I don't know if that matters, but she used the term going hard in the parks, full stink. And I think it just came, it just came out of her. But I was like, I know exactly. Did you, I said to her, did you just say full stink? I was like, <laughs> she goes, yeah. And it's, it just, I've never heard that before. It just stuck with our podcast. So everyone, my community knows what that means. Say it and you immediately know what it means. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that was yeah. fantastic. I don't know. That's going to live forever. I may have to use that somewhere. Full stink. Good. Yep. Yeah. Contemporary or Polynesian? Polynesian. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that vibe too. Haunted Mansion or Pirates? But I have finally firmly come down for Haunted Mansion. Okay. Yeah. They're both, I understand. They're meant to be hard, these questions. Yeah. My top two. My top. I love All both. Right. All right. Most people do. Flower and garden or food and wine? I would normally say food and wine, but I have really switched on that because flower and garden is food and wine with flowers and gardens. So I know, get, yeah. I know. I don't, do you think it's as crowded too? I don't think flower and garden is as crowded for the locals too. No, it yeah. isn't. Still hasn't got the popularity of the food and wine, seems like. Yeah, I think that's one thing about food and wine that as it got more and more popular and there was a lot more indulgence i just started shifting away from it a little bit i still love it yeah right but yeah i think a lot of people say flower and garden which is interesting because yeah. food and wine is so popular flight of passage or rise of the rise of the resistance see these are impossible choices <laughs> um, choosing between kids yeah i'm gonna go rise because not that i don't love flight of passage i think it's absolutely remarkable yeah, I'm going rise. I'm going rise. I would go with rise too. I, I get a little nauseous yeah. on flight of passage. Well, I say a little, a lot nauseous on flight of passage. Rise of the resistance. See, that's where you need those chewable ginger candies. Ooh, is that a tip? Yep. Ginger candies. Absolutely. Ginger candies. Well, you Fantastic. got my phone number now. You can text me where I get those. <laughs> okay. Chewable ginger candy. I heard, I heard that one before. Really? That's helpful. Yep. Okay. Or Dramamine. Bone, bone Poor drama. But chewable ginger candies aren't going to make you tired. I like that. Yeah, that's a yeah. great tip. Yeah. Test track or Soren? Oh, Soren. Yeah. Definitely Soren. You're hitting most of my same answers. Joffrey's Ooh. or Starbucks? I'm going Joffrey's only because Star Starbucks doesn't need my help. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're too crowded. That's yeah. my problem with Starbucks. I do like coffee yeah. better at Joffrey's, actually. I love their story. Yeah. The locals. My too. husband's a big coffee guy. Yeah. So Joffrey's is He's is okay a with Joffrey's yep. too? Awesome. Definitely. This is an old school question. Wishes, illuminations, or phantasmic? Illuminations every day of the week. My husband and I got engaged to illuminations. Okay. You got a personal love yep. for illuminations. That You got engaged yep. in front of illuminations? That's cool. In and when the year Illuminations came out, I had the CD of the music. Yeah. And our oldest was probably, gosh, how old was he? He was young, six, seven, something like that. And we used to dance around our house to the music, pretending we were following the parade at yeah. the end. Yeah. And then we, when we got to actually do that in real life, priceless memory. Oh, fantastic. That's a great answer. Yeah. yeah. Halloween or Christmas party? Nope, I'm not choosing between those two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like them both? Okay. Oh, I love them both. I love them both. Uh, I've never done the Christmas party. Make time for that. No. I'm not big on the paid for parties only because they're expensive. Yeah. But I love the Halloween and the Christmas. You know what? I'm going to go with the Christmas one. Yep, no, Christmas. Christmas. And I think most people would say Halloween. So good for ho Christmas party to get a vote. 
I'm I'm glad. I could be persuaded for Halloween, glad, though. Yeah. <laughs> people are, Halloween party has gotten really popular. You got to get tickets. It sells out. It's it's fabulous. It's You know what? I'm going Halloween. I'm going Halloween. Nice. Yeah, I'm going Halloween. <laughs> I changed her mind. Let's see, Skyliner or Monorail? Skyliner. Yeah, that, that's an easy one, right? Yeah, Such I love Such a game Skyliner. changer. Yeah, it definitely is. Okay, now these are really important. Dole Whip or Citrus Swirl? I'm going Dole Whip. Okay, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, I'm a yeah, long time with Dull Whips. I'm a little mad. I think Citrus Swirl has been in and out. It's been there and not there when I go. Sometimes I either an orange swirl. It's not the Citrus Swirl. Cause yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Citrus Swirl. I'm happy with either. All right, yeah. But if I have to choose, I'll go Dull Whip, yeah. Frozen mango or frozen lime margaritas in the Mexican pavilion? Oh, let's stick with lime. Ah, thank you. Oh, that's... Yeah. See, that's one of my jokes in the in the podcast is the frozen oh, okay. margaritas. We've loved those from day one. That was like, <laughs> these are the most amazing margaritas I've ever had. Yep. Yep. Lime is good. And but the rose, what was it? It was a rose, some kind of a rose cocktail in Mexico. That was unbelievable. Anyway, oh. go ahead. Well, I'm going to get, okay, that's, you got through that. You did an awesome job with the oh, this cool. or that. Now let's hear some of your favorites. you have any favorite music in the parks? Favorite music in the parks. Walking through, walking into Epcot. You mean like background yeah. music yeah. in the? Yeah. Yeah, walking into Epcot, especially, I don't know if they've done it, if they stopped doing it, but they used to, every once in a while, do the really old school, mm. the original Epcot music, like one day out of the year or something. Yeah. That original Epcot music when you first walked into the park. That's especially. hysterical because I said this during my interview I had. Someone asked me, and I had the same answer. Yeah. Oh, really? The Epcot That's background great. music. Yeah. For sure. Love that loop. Top yep. three sit-down restaurants. Oh, top three sit-down restaurants. Mr. Paul, Tiffin's, and, oh, gosh, there's so many You're good ones. you a signature at the dining now. gal. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> The f I'm going to go for Morimoto only because wow. I absolutely love their ribs. Wow. That's a great endorsement. I love ribs and I've heard that before. Yes. Yeah. That's. I took good. about a year to learn how to make those at home and they're not easy. In an RV, can you make them? <laughs> oh, no. I would never use any kind of hot fat in an RV. <laughs> you could burn this thing down in an instant. I like that answer. Favorite resort? Well, favorite resort. I love the Wilderness Lodge. Okay. Um, I mean, they've all got their thing, don't they? It's uh, just kind of what mood you're in. So true. I'm going full Wilderness Lodge. I think I'm getting the, yeah, you like to try the national parks, sounds like, if you're RVing out west right now. We have been to almost every national park in the country now. Awesome. Yep. It's been amazing. So the Wilderness Lodge represents them well? Yeah, pretty well. <laughs> I love clean, that too. really clean. We stayed at the cabin, Susan, one night this past trip. Wow. In September. Yeah. Ugh, the DVC fantastic. cabin. That thing is amazing. I haven't stayed there yet. I could live there. That would be, uh, be perfectly fine right in that spot. You can see the fireworks <laughs> from the hot tub. I'll just let you know. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Favorite snack besides popcorn. <laughs> oh, no. Besides popcorn. Oh, this one's terrible. It's got to be a Mickey bar just for the nostalgia of it all. Love it. Yeah, but popcorn, really. Favorite ride? The Hades Haunted Mansion still kill? Yeah. yeah uh, I guess Haunted we Mansion. Had, we were there. Favorite show? Uh, Well, Illuminations is gone. I'm going to go with Festival of the Lion King. Yeah. That's always... A top one. How about a favorite drink? Favorite. There is a, I'm trying to think of what it is. There's a rose, some kind of a rose. I think it might be a rose flavored margarita at in Mexico. No, nope. sorry. It's gone straight out of my head that I sit down in Mexico. Oh. Cantina San Angel. Yes. There you go. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. The San they, Angel they, Inn. Yes. Yeah. They do a rose flavored. I think it's a margarita. Makes sense. Absolutely blew me away. I love that. We're going to be looking yeah. for that. Any live ent entertainment that's your favorite? I think for sentimental reasons, I got to go with the Jamaters. All right. Yeah, they're good fun. They're still there, too. 
How about? Do you remember? Yeah. Did you did you go back way back in the day? They used to have these aliens. It was a husband, wife, and their son who were dressed in full body suits that were like aliens. Yeah. And they did. Do you remember that? Contortionist, like or acrobatic kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they came out. Didn't like smoke come out? And then they come out of a smoke, like out of not a door, but like from maybe an Epcot they did that. Like it was an Epcot, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'd say that, but they've been gone for thirty years. Was it that oh, long? Okay, push. Yeah, push. Yeah. Does push count as entertainment? Yeah, I. It's funny. I mentioned this on my ten year thing. I said one of the things I miss was push. I the, miss push. Yeah, the and I miss garbage. All they used to have so many talking water fountains, talking trash cans. There yeah. were several yes. of them in Epcot, and that was a real loss. I agree. Well, last couple here. Favorite character? Tinkerbell. Oh, really? Nice yeah. one. Yeah. How come? I just love Tinkerbell. I think she's. I think she's wonderful. You get she's excited just... when she flies. Yeah, the... I'd like to do that. Actually, I think that would be a cool <laughs> thing to to do. Did you ever see the? My wife showed me a picture. There was one time a guy did it. They had a close up of that guy. I <laughs> think, think I know beard. what you're talking about, and I. Th- I think I know who it was, and I think that it didn't actually happen. Oh, okay. That, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to. You just ruined it for me, the, the, the image. You know could, what? Could... I do remember that, and it was amazing that he got to do that, that Disney gave him permission. <laughs> Tinkerbell, awesome. And then we'll leave with this. Your favorite smell at Disney World. I love the smell of the resorts, and you can actually buy candles and the the oil that you put in a little incense thing. Right. And it used to be called green clove or clove something. Yes. And it changed. It's got a new name. I can't remember what the name is. That's the smell from like the beach club. Yep. Lobby. But but several of the resorts now have that smell. Right. Yet I used to love the smell of the poly, which is that really earthy. Mm. Do you remember when they had that central landscaping? Yes. The fountain. Yeah. But I love the smell of the resort. It just makes you relax, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh, I'm finally here. Yeah. One time at Christmas, we got, that's an infuser. It's like a big little fan thing. And the company that made that for the resorts, my wife found out who it was and bought that for Christmas for us one time. Yeah, I've got the oil at home. <laughs> I use go. it all the time. <laughs> love it. Well, Susan, you've been a delight. It's been so much fun talking to you. Can you tell us where we can find you online and where can we get the book? You can get the book anywhere. It's in all all major stores, on Amazon, on uh, Simon & Schuster's website, Barnes & Noble. And you can find my husband and I, we have a travel writing business, but you can find us on, just do a search on Vanessa Travel Media. Oh, and cool. you'll find all of our social media. Awesome. I may look you up again, like I said, if I expand into other travel one of these days. I would love to Definitely. have some advice, get some advice from you. Oh, I will talk your ear <laughs> off on, on the expanded travel, especially the RV stuff. So Thanks. when you're done with the RV, so when are you finishing up your one year, in a couple months? We left on May 14 and we return on May 14. Yeah. And um, so that'll be our full year. And then we're going to decide where we go from there because we are really enjoying the lifestyle. You were saying this, it's tiring. How come you think it's tiring? I know when I've traveled for business, I was always amazed how exhausted I felt. Like I got home on a Friday and I think I slept half the weekend. Is it just being it, out of your element? Well, it's that. It, it's really our own fault because we have packed in far more than any sane person would ever do. We've really packed this trip tight. Yeah. It's really our own fault that we're this tired. Had we done this over the course of five years, we'd be fine. But condensing it into one has been a lot. Have you been writing about it and documenting it? Yeah, I've been doing a blog on, but it's just look up Vanessa Travel Media. You'll find the blog. So I've been doing that. It's really fun fun. writing. Yeah. My husband's been writing a piece a uh, monthly serial for the independent in the UK on this trip. And hopefully we'll get a book out of it at the end, but I can't think about that right now. Well, it's been so much fun talking to you. I hope we get a chance to talk again. Anytime you want to come on, just let me know. All right. Oh, I would be delighted. It was really a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.
awesome chatting with Susan. I hope I get to continue to have conversations with her as she gets back down to Florida with her husband, finishing up that year-long trip on the RV. Appreciate it, Susan, for reaching out to me. Anytime you've got a book coming out, please. I'd love to be one of the podcasts that hosts you on the show. Thanks for the questions from our listeners, Samantha Carpin, Wendy Fox, Cousin Heather, and John Self. That is one of my favorite things to do is reach out to my community and ask them if they have any questions for guests that we bring on the show. And if you're a book author or you got a Disney blog, a YouTube channel, or a podcast, please do what Susan's publisher did. Send me an email if you'd like to bring my geek some great Disney World tips. My email is kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. My daughter Lindsay and I were in New York City yesterday to see a Broadway show, The Notebook. And yes, Kevin Curtis Allen, I did cry. I admit it right here in front of God and country. I, I guess I am kind of emotional. It's, it's an emotional show. It's a fantastic show. Really enjoyed that. She said I would, and we made last minute plans to be down in, in New York City. It was really fun. I took a picture of a bus that had the Hades Town promo on it to my friend Bubba Mack. Come to find out, he was on his way to New York City to see Hades Town. His boss is in the production right now. I wish we could have got a chance to see you, Bubba. I know you're going out to dinner or grab a bite to eat in between shows for Annie DeFranco, but would have loved to have seen you, pal. But some of my geek friends surprised me. I was texting with Samantha Kuhn, but still surprised me. Shouted out my name in the middle of New York City coming out of the Notebook show. And she was hanging out with Kayleen and Scott Stuns, Patreon supporters of mine, good friends of mine. And they surprised me. You ever think someone's talking to you, but you're not sure? I get that sometimes when I'm in Disney World. People will notice me in the parks. And it was really loud and crazy. You know how it is coming out of a Broadway show. We did get over to Smackery's for some cookies. All you Gideon's fans, if you're in New York City, try Smackery's. They're not quite as thick as the Gideon cookies, but they're just as yummy. Brought some of those home with us, and we got a nice Times Square picture. And that's a geek meet that is kind of a pre-New York City geek meet, because we've got one that we're planning for New York City September 7th and 8th this year coming up. If you'd like to be a part of that, Samantha told me we got a bunch of people. we got a little chat going on in Facebook, making the plans for when Kevin Curtis Allen, yes, the British are coming. Kevin and his wife are coming before their trip to Disney World to spend some time in New York City. We're going to be tourists, Samantha said to me yesterday. She wasn't sure she's ever been a tourist before, and we're going to do some fun things. We're going to see Hamilton, for one, and we're going to do a boat ride around the Statue of Liberty, which is totally different, I'm told, than seeing the Statue of Liberty in Times Square, if you know what I mean, because there were two of them in Times Square. There was also Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse with their heads off, which is really disturbing. So be ready for that, Kevin, if we go into Times Square, which I know we are. We're going to do one of those singing shows for dinner or lunch and just have some good times, probably the top of the rock, somewhere we're on a platform where we could see the whole city. That's going to be fun. We got a lot of geeks reaching out to us for this. I'm starting to get nervous. It might be a pretty big crowd, but we'd love to have you. Let us know you're coming. Get into that little Facebook chat. Keep up with what's going on with those plans. And thank you once again for all of those of you who reach out to Margie and Judy. The travel and tears at gmail.com. If you've already booked your own trip and package to Disney World, you can transfer that trip to them. They love working with you guys and talking Disney World every single day. Again, thank you for reaching out to them for your travel guides and my Patreon supporters. Patreon is a website you can go to to donate to the podcast. And thank you so much for all of those of you who have been donating over the years. I had three new subscriptions come in this week. Shout out to Rachel from the UK. I just saw that one come in yesterday while I was in New York City. Thank you, Rachel. You guys definitely reach out to me if I can do anything to help you for your plans coming to Disney World. Bill Carmichael. Bill, Bill and I got onto a call. We've known each other. He's been a longtime listener, him and his wife, Allison. We've hung around in the parks a little bit, and he's looking to do a podcast for Disney World. And we had a conversation this past week. If you guys are looking to do your own podcast, and I'm going to do some coaching with Bill as he needs it. He's taken some time to get his show together, but if you'd like to be part of some coaching on podcasting, if you're planning to do a Disney World podcast or any kind of podcast, reach out to me. My friend Joe Taylor and I can help you get your podcast launched. And then Bubba Mac, as I mentioned before, 
he renewed his membership. And thank you, Bubba. I released a couple of episodes over the past couple of weeks where I'm doing my coffee walks around the Caribbean beach. And this past week, Margita and I are on the Skyliner going over to Epcot, chatting and walking through Epcot. And then our tour of Spaceship Earth is on that recording. And I got a few more. I think I'm halfway through my recordings from my last trip to Disney World. If you like to hear those live recordings, I produce them. As a bonus, Inner Circle podcast. I'm up to episode 179. Check out patreon.com. Geeking on WW. You can be a member and support the podcast. I really appreciate you guys. As I'm beginning, like I said, looking at producing content on YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber and you'd like to give me some advice, I'd love to hear it. And thanks for Nick and Carlin, YouTubers themselves, who had an intro there. There's a bunch still, I think I only got a couple left from my birthday wishes that came in over this past January. And I'm, I think I have maybe one or two of those left. If you'd like to do an intro for us, I'd really appreciate it. Just tell us who you are, where you're from, and some fun Disney World fact about yourself and you go geeking on Walt Disney World, Curtis and the whole Geekin family, email them to me at kurt.stone at geekinonww.com because we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations and we can help you if you just reach out to us. Book a trip. If you'd like to be on the podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you geeks. Keep taking care of each other. Have a magical day, and I hope all your dreams come true.